This ointment relieves flatulence. It's funny that one of the things they brought with them in their haste to flee their like destroyed, burned down, attacked village was uh, farting ointment, <laughs> fart cream. How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to the brand new Dead in Vinland, which just came out today. In case you're curious like I was, Vinland is what the Vikings called North America when they first arrived here. So this is a very interesting looking genre blending game. It's survival, management, RPG, action turn-based battles something like there, there's like there's like six different genres that this pulls together so I just had to give it a try I'm trying to think of a like a Viking name I'm pretty sure they always end in things like guard we'll go with Graham guard I realize I realize Graham is my name I'm just gonna reinforce that people pronounce it that way but whatever whoa there was a dead in Bermuda how did I not know that this was like a sequel. After a short cutscene that kind of sets up the game here, it's a family that's exiled from their homeland, making their way lost at sea. After that, we can jump right into the game. A family. A peaceful life. But, like the skulls sing, you can't always get what you want. And what the gods gave me was fire and steel. Kill the bastard! They screamed. Luckily, we were warned in time. I can't forget the tears of my beloved Bloodywed when they burned down our house. Our memories. I yelled, drop these bags and row if you want to live. We barely escaped on a stolen boat with no map and no destination. They didn't bother to follow us. No turning back. We were exiled. This is how our miserable journey began. We drifted for days. Depressed. Hungry. Lost. We thought we had reached the end of the world, when the gods sent us the most terrible storm. Our fate was decided. Death. Oblivion. Then, we saw it, coming out of nowhere. Salvation? Or Loki's dirty tricks? are playing with us. But I just know that we must survive. Eirik. It might just be Eric, but I think it's probably like I, Eirik. Bloody wed. Kira, Moira, where are you? We're here, honey. We're fine. Odin be praised. Things were looking pretty dire there. I thought someone would have died from that. The Allfather hasn't completely abandoned us, it seems. I wouldn't have bet on it concerning the last turn of events. Kari, are you alright, my child? Yeah, Mom, I'm great. Our home is burned, Njord's best storm in our asses, and Dad's perfect landing on the sharp rocks of an unknown island. A perfect day! Bloodwed could comfort her? I, I can pick anyone's response I should I feel like I want to scold her but I feel like you got it things are a little too rough already joke with her a little bit in our misery we can be thankful that we didn't get Njord's rod up our asses believe me honey is Moira a sister here blood of wet is obviously the the wife of Eirik and then this is their kid I, I don't really know how Moira fits in Ugh, gross I'm gonna throw up <laughs> I just made her more depressed? The symbol for depression was a noose? What the shit? Will someone kill themselves if this gets too sad? <laughs> yeah, well, that's cute and all, but what do we know now? Do you have an idea where we are, Eirik? No, we drifted far to the west over many days, to the end of the world as we know it. 
Never heard of an island that far to the west. I don't think any Norsemen ever went here. Just ponder that for a second. We should explore the vicinity and see if we can find someone that could help us. I hope that someone doesn't turn out to be a frost giant. Or worse. I thought that was a weird Thor thing. The frost giants are a legitimate part of like Norse mythology. Like a real thing they were concerned about. We'll see. The family, still disoriented by the shipwreck, started to look around. They decided to walk away from the sad remains of their ship and to explore the woods. Man, how weird would it be to arrive in a new land without any pictures or anything whatsoever to go off of? Like, early explorers were badass. You don't know what kind of monstrosities are there. You come from the land of fawns and bunny rabbits and daisies and you go to some world where there's fucked up like wolverines and grizzly bears or something. Like, you don't know what's going to be there. The forest was as silent as themselves. The atmosphere was getting tense. When? Look! Over there! A track! Kari rushed to take the path, and the others followed her. They continued like this for almost an hour, when they finally found the end of their path outside the forest. They just arrived at, like, a settlement? A wooden shack just here! Now, is this, like, an old fur trader's shack or something? I don't really know the timeline of this, but, like... Is it abandoned is the, the biggest question. Doesn't seem to be inhabited, though. Good. Important. Uh, I, I would like to just embrace the Vikingness of it all and just say it's ours now. I was saying that with hesitation in my voice because I was going to go the other way. Made the last minute decision to just claim it. What do we do now? But we have our new home. Seems like life is officially perfect again. There's no hope of turning back to our home. Only fire and steel await us there. So we must start a new life here. Maybe a land of new possibilities for us, as long as we stick together. Oh, look at that. They all admire him. Eirik really bringing the family together. I'm thankful to Frigg to be able to endure the hardships with my husband, my dear sister, and my daughters. That is like an aunt. I was wondering, uh, Moira seemed like she was probably older than Kyra. Pro Kira? What the shit? What have I been calling her? Also, I thought that Odin's wife was Frigga? I could be wrong there. Oh, look at that. He loves her, too. They're just... The family's really pulling each other through this, I'd say. They're all working together super well already. We're bound to be fine. Without my family, I wouldn't have the will to fight and live. We're here for you, sister. Always. Oh, just keep the love train going. But I still hope this cursed island is inhabited. Time will be very long if it's just the four, the four of us. And we'll need husbands if we want to repopulate the island. Right, Kari? It's definitely not Kira. K Kari? She shot a wink before she said that part. You're supposed to shoot the wink. There, there was another wink. There you go. She's got the worst time to wink. It just keeps going. You're bad at this. You are not allowed to do subtle, jokey things like this with sexual undertones because no one's going to take it the right way. Ugh, no way. Ever. You can stay in bed with your dirty dreams. I'm going to explore this island and make it mine. And then over there in the shadows, she's still chucking a couple winks, still trying to figure out her comedic timing. She's not great at it yet. Listen, everyone. Now is not the time for jokes. We still have plenty to do if we want to survive. We still have enough potable water for a few days if we ration ourselves but we can't rely on that. I found two big barrels that we can use as containers for our water. Man, if you didn't find this village, what were you guys going to do? I assumed as Vikings you had much better survival instincts. Oh, perfect. We have two of twenty, whatever that was, and two of ten water. I thought the first thing was water. Don't forget, don't drink water coming from the rivers before boiling it. You'd be sick to death. So that means we need to build a fire. Quickly. I only have one fire mushroom left. Here, take it. Alright, we're bleeding over into the fantasy realm, because there definitely aren't mushrooms that just start fires. Is there... Can you just... Is there some rock-hard mushroom that you can use as tinder? I doubt it. Good, we'll need to build a lot of things if we want to settle here. I'll set up a workshop with a few tools where we can work quickly. Maybe she's not striking the mushroom like flint and steel. Maybe it just burns well. But we'll need resources. Wood, stone, ropes... Hopefully this land has wild ropes growing on trees. That would be extra helpful. We can scavenge wood from our ship for now. We still had a bit of food left on it, too. We should go fetch it. 
Yes, but it won't last long. We mustn't rely on that too much. I looked around and found some things we could use. Check it out. Way to be super useful there, Kari. Already with the rope, dishing out rope and stone and all these different things. Good idea doing the reasonable thing of looking around the already existing camp. Good job, Kari. I love you, my daughter. We should explore the surroundings some more. We may find food, resources, and whatnot. Good old abundance of whatnot. And beasts and traps. I agree that we should explore, but be careful. We don't know what to expect. I hope this game includes these like trade-offs that if you uh, do more and more exploring, you're more and more likely to get injured or encounter uh, a trap or a snare or like a wild animal or something. I, I assume with the survival management side of this, it'll be all about those sort of trade-offs. Let's start working on this camp. We have plenty to do. So I was planning to do the tutorial first and then and then come into the game with you guys but it seems like the tutorial is really integrated well into the game here it's not separated so i think it would make sense to do it together it's a turn-based game you can always take your time to think each day has three phases morning afternoon and and night <laughs> they do tasks on camp and night is when they discuss eat drink and rest so that's that's our that's that makes enough sense to me Critical resources, fire, and water. Always keep an eye on their level. And then non-potable water. That's what that was. It looked like a water drop. I should have realized it had like a weird little po poison molecule in it or something. Click on this button, access water and fire management. That's nice and straightforward. Overall condition is excellent. That's good. Fire is completely off. You can light it with wood and tinder. You can feed it with additional wood. Uh, without fire, the family won't hold for long and tinder is very scarce. Pretty scarce, very scarce. It's got some sort of scarcity, so we'll get the fire going. They also can't survive drinking non-potable water. You need to make it potable. The decrease of fire intensity in the process, so keeping the fire roaring and balancing water will take some fine-tuned management. We'll get some of that going right away. Uh, let's just do 100% of the non-potable water right now, and we'll figure the rest of that out later. That seems like a good place to start. I don't want to forget about it later. Now is the time to assign some tasks to your characters. Still some supplies left from the shipwreck. Someone could take care of scavenging it. That is what we'll do then. All the characters can be accessed from the sidebar here. And then you just drag and drop them into an activity slot. We'll get Moira to the search slot here. Oh cool, and it comes up search scavenging. Items scavenged, 61%, 10 uses left. Oh wait, so as we discover new areas to search and scavenge, then like you'll slowly be chipping away at it. I wonder if some characters are better scavengers than others. I would assume so. We'll see later how to execute all the assigned tasks. Oh yeah, okay, so right now we're just setting it up, which I like. You don't have to scramble. You can take your time, like it said. Someone should be fetching more water. So, Blue to Wed will take care of this for us. You are just gonna pull it from the, the barrels? Or she's gonna use the barrels to fetch it? Either way, you should upgrade camp. That seems like a crazy thing to do immediately, but sure, if that's what you recommend. The workshop enables the crafting activity. Assign Eric to do some crafting. And you gotta choose a crafting plan. Some stations have additional options available, accessible by clicking on the station. Remember to look for these, especially when a new station has just been built. So, click on the workshop and choose a crafting plan. What do you, what should we get here? Wood is a pretty basic resource, useful to keep fire blazing and craft other things. So a lumber camp will be good to have right away. We'll get that going. Oh shit, and then it, there's like uh, further branches of it here, or you can upgrade it I guess? The island is covered in a beautiful forest, so finding trees is not a problem, but cutting trees and bringing them back to camp is. So we will just get right on that. The workshop is currently damaged, which is indicated by the color within the hammer icon on the station's head. So green would be would be perfect. Click here to have a global view of the map of the camp condition and be able to repair the stations. Every station, apart from the shipwreck and expedition, deteriorate a little bit every night. God damn, and every time they are being used by some characters. That makes more sense. Every night, I think the ravages of time work 
their magic a little bit more slowly than what they're indicating here. Lower condition means lower efficiency. Be sure to repair them frequently to keep them at maximum output. So the workshop uh, needs a little bit of repairing. What is that costing? It took a stone. Yes? Should I just repair it once more just to get it up to excellent condition? Just so we can have 0% effect on crafting speed. Have that looking as good as possible. Uh, I guess I could have... Oh, I, it, it only takes wood. And only one wood. Or one ten wood. How does that work? It only takes one wood, and I have ten. That's what it's showing me there. So let's make sure we get our shelter into a better place. Better sleep quality. Let's get that. It, it random 5 to 10%, so when it's sitting... 5 to 15, sorry. So when it only has like 10% left to repair, it's almost worth it to wait till it's closer to 15%. So I think I'm going to leave that for a second. Last but not least, exploration. Remember the family just arrived on an unknown island. Who knows what they will find? Resources, dangers, maybe even people. Okay, cool. And I think uh, Kyra should probably do this. Kari, God, Kari, Kari? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about butchering your name like this. Uh, but she seems to have an efficacy for, for exploration, so might as well send her onto that duty. Areas explored... 109% somehow, minus 0.5 potable water, chances of encounter 36, hmm, I'm sure I'll get a better sense of all that as I, as I work through a few turns of this game. All the characters have something to do, you just need to let the time flow, observe the outcome of each activity. So maybe morning is assigning, afternoon is executing, so next, the next step, Oh, will it go one at a time through everything? Perfect. So plus three wood, plus two rope, and fabric, which I haven't needed yet, but everyone staying closed would be good. Fish, fish bait, angelica ointment, selandine ointment. I, who knows what the hell that'll be. A bunch of fatigue, a bunch of depression. I guess ripping apart your old boat is kind of harrowing, that it just doesn't feel very good. Oh, so there he goes spending things to build the lumber camp and everything. 96%! You couldn't finish it all in one day, Eirik? What the hell kind of lazy shit is that? Pretty big boost of non-potable water. Maybe that'll be less concerning than I thought it would be. But already, just the act of searching is using up water, and probably at the end of the day, they need more. Did she just learn how to make something? Explored 6% of the forest. Not all that tired from running exploration. She finished exploring a new area of the island. Oh, so maybe uh, she just helped expand the map. Oh, okay. So this is a very large place that we're exploring, and presumably the further out you go, the more water it'll cost and more fatigue. So basically she was exploring the, you know, the quote-unquote back porch of our island here, and it'll get more intensive as things go on. So, newly discovered area here. Take a quick look at what she found. Every area contains exactly one thing you can interact with. Okay, that keeps it simple. Find it and click on it to display all the available actions. The ornate coffer, that, that's all that it is. Most of these can only be used a fixed amount of times. And the red ones indicate that you won't be able to do any other action afterwards. It, it seems like I'm only assigning characters one action at a time anyway, so I'm curious how, like, you would be stranded in the location where that thing was if it was red. Please note that performing these actions won't affect the time of the day. Oh, so you can do as many as you wish can. You can also choose to keep some for later. Oh, wait, so maybe if, uh, if you could interact with this, like, three times, but it was red, you'd only be able to do once per day? That's kind of my interpretation. We'll figure it out. See, these ones are red. So inspecting it costs nothing, is my understanding. We'll test that. You whistle when you examine the chest. It is almost in perfect state, and its craftsmanship is exquisite. The antlers have been polished and circled in gold. The intricate carving shows great mastery of woodworking. Even the choice of wood is luxurious. All of these foreign trees that we've never seen before in our entire lives, but ooh, Boy, does it look like they chose some goodies. Makes you wonder if the inside matches the outside. I think I would I, I would spend an action. Uh, opening carefully. Let's check the surroundings. Carefully is liable to fail. 
opening by force is probably going to work, but will probably damage something, I would rather search for like a key or something. Uh, who will perform this action? Uh, probably Carrie, Carrie, because she has the best exploration, right? So that's I like that it's showing me their their individual stats here. So her base is 58, minus 2 because she's fatigued, plus 8 efficiency for every ex exploration-based action, and plus 8 exploration speed when using the expedition camp. Who has the worst? I just want, I'm curious how it stacks up her things. Terrible <laughs> efficiency with exploration, terrible speed, minus experience gains, stay-at-home mom hates walking. Oh, I thought that was Moira. That was, um... Oh my god, Bruder Wooder, Bruder Weld. I don't remember her name. But anyways, Kai, Carrie, you're going to be doing it. Ornate coffers, something bugs you. The chest seems to have been abandoned not that long ago. In plain sight, search for anything unusual. Okay, did you find anything, though? Is it, oh, I, I have to select that. Skill check, exploration. So it was a 76% chance of her finding anything. You fear an ambush. You carefully search the surroundings, but find no one alive. What you do find, though, are two dead Norsemen and a dead furry creature you've never seen before. From the looks of the scene, you believe the one with trousers, his trousers down, was relieving himself when he was attacked by the big unknown creature. I want to see a picture of the creature. I want to know what the hell took this guy down and why it's also presumably dead. His friend killed the beast, but not before suffering a fatal wound in the abdomen. They must have died two days ago, at most. That means they won't mind if you take their belongings, will they? So not an ambush, they were just killed by a, a random beast. Mead? That'll be... I, I feel like vi that's like a Viking thing. I don't know, maybe people drink mead all over the place. Uh, several weapons... Ooh, look how pumped she is. Wow! <laughs> While you were away from the chest, someone smashed it open and looted everything valuable inside. That did not take long. It said those guys were dead for two days and in that tiny window of time, someone just happened to come by and steal all this shit. Well, we got robbed. That's unfortunate. But I, So I guess we got the axe and everything from the corpses. Damn, that should teach you about leaving a valuable treasure unguarded. I don't know. I We just arrived here. You don't need to get ambushed on like the first day. Oh, but she's bummed out about it. I don't know. You still acquired things, though. Is it really that miserable? I feel like you, you shouldn't feel that bad about it, right? Some items are usable, which means they can be used <laughs> instantly on any character. Those are very helpful in keeping them up and running, so you should definitely remember to use them. You can access the use item pop-up via the sidebar or clicking directly on a character. Blue to red. Sorry about not knowing what the hell to call you. So I just want you to see the different things that we just acquired. Try using item on a character who needs it the most. Or because you have a personal preference. <laughs> you get to play favorites with the family. I like that. Uh, so let's see what our different items are here. This ointment relieves flatulence. Oh, and protects from the plague. Who... I guess I could have a negative on hunger or sickness or something. It's funny that one of the things they brought with them in their haste to flee their, like, destroyed, burned down, attacked village was uh, farting ointment. <laughs> Fart cream. And this one cures poor eyesight. Mead probably just makes people super happy. Makes you depressed and excited. Oh, it has a, it has a range of outcomes. So this one is always minus depression, always minus sickness. So you get depressed when you're a little too gassy, I guess. But this one could make you more sick and vomit. Like, interesting, interesting little balance you would have to play there. Uh, critical hit, you don't have a weapon. The Sa Saga Axe, a very sharp small axe with runic ornaments. Maybe it was used once by a formidable warrior whose prowess was swung by the scalds. But now you use it to cut down wood. A uh, bonus to forestry. So who is like my primary forester? I would say you should take uh, take this then, if you're going to be the forester anyways. Is anyone particularly like sick or depressed? I think you car Carrie has the worst depression right now, right? Oh, Moira's all bummed out too. Do you know what? Take a little bit of the ointment. Let's bring that down for your sake. Uh, who is most sick? I hope no one's sick. 
We have a couple people who are mildly sick. Uh, I don't think I'll play around with any of the rest of that for the time being. In order to manage properly the family's well-being and efficiency, your most valuable asset is the character sheet, where you can find all this information. Access the character sheet by the sidebar, or that was the same, I think that was the same thing. So this, oh, there's a much more in-depth character sheet. Holy shit. The health of a character is composed of five distinct parts. If any of these goes all the way to 100, the character dies. If one of the four family members dies, the game is over. Shit. So none of these can get to 100 on any of the four characters. Now it makes sense why you're only managing, like, four characters. Because if anyone dies, the whole thing's over. you gotta got to make sure you're balancing all that as much as possible. Every character has different strengths expressed by their skills. Skills will increase over time when being used. That That's pretty straightforward. I think you can figure out more or less what's going on with all that. And skills are grouped into four categories, each of which is being negatively affected by different elements of the health. So the, the fatigue wears something like that down. And Okay, interesting. It, it has nice summaries for all that if I ever forget it. That's my preference, is to have things laid out in a way that I don't have to super remember all of it. Let, let's see what some of her traits are. Relentless. Minus 25 to fatigue increases. Okay, so where she would get, you know, uh, 8, it only becomes 6. But negative. Can't stay in place. Uh, minus 50% healing, cooking, fishing, gardening... Any of that stuff is just too mind-numbing for her. Hates cooking and impulsive, minus to wisdom. Dang. I You probably acquire new ones. It has like a ton of room here, so you probably acquire new ones, which is really cool. I really like the idea that the character would grow over time. That's I really like the sounds of that. Every task is associated to a skill, and a character with a higher skill will yield better results. That makes sense. Just make sure you're utilizing them as, as well as possible. You should now be able to plan the next phase on your own. So that's probably about the end of the tutorial. One or two new things might come up. But uh, make sure you're using items, repair stations. Once everything seems fine, click on the next, the next button there. Uh, maybe we round out this day. Because everyone would have just done one thing so far, right? And maybe we, uh, we split up... A little bit a little bit more I, I I would probably keep you guys doing all more or less the same things you should finish crafting that definitely uh, it's not finished right yeah so I'll leave you to finish that probably just keep getting water is is the best use there and I, I'll keep you exploring I'm just gonna keep everyone where they're at there's I don't see any real reason to change let's Maybe like the next day or whatever we can think about reassigning, but for now we might as well just stay down the path of raking in a nice evenly spread resources. You know, she's over there getting things like food and firewood, but really tiring herself out and really bumming herself out. Shit, that's like a really boring job. Probably shouldn't keep her doing that too, too much. His crafting improved. And he finished the lumber camp, which is dope. The island is covered with beautiful forest. Enables wood cutting activity for one character, which I just gave him an axe, so he'll probably be in charge of that next. Hey, there, wood cutting's available over there now. Pretty pooped from that activity. This one is super straightforward. I don't really... I think she must be going down here getting water and filling these, these buckets, I think is how that is set up. And let's see if Carrie is able to find anything else. Discovered new area. At the beach. But should I go do that right now? Or do I save that? Like, you probably don't want to go check it out at night, right? The sun is fading. Time for the family to make final arrangements before the night, during which they will chat, drink, uh, eat. I, I probably don't assign any of that, right? They probably just do it, like, do what they need. There's nothing set in stone, but a good rule of thumb is to have some food, approximately one potable water per person, not not half, she's using half when she explores, make sure it's one. And be sure that the fire intensity is high enough so that it won't die down during their sleep. Just click on the end day button when everything is taken care of. Do I just send everyone to shelter? Right? If I if I send them all there, then they'll they'll turn in for the night and that'll be 
ev everyone will be nice and rested after that. I don't want you guys doing all this stuff all through the, the middle of the night. End, end day, I think? Let's see, let's see, this is what I was hoping, that they would all end up here. Okay, that's enough for today. Come, everyone, it's time to grab a bite and try to sleep a little. You can't start without me. I want to consolidate the shelter some more. Consolidate or consummate? <laughs> Just break her in. You shouldn't overdo it, Eirik. The shadows are already dancing with us. Yeah, your first night on an island. Just make sure you're getting rested. Or someone stand guard. Maybe that. Maybe letting your guard down is the wrong approach. No, really, I, I can. I, I must do it. It's my fault if you... Not again, Eirik. We already discussed that topic. You don't have to take the blame alone for what is happening to us. She's pissed off at him? For, for trying to look out for the family? But you heard like me, honey. The men that burned our home were after me. They screamed, kill the bastard. I'm the bastard. It's my burden to bear. Alone. Oh, he's bummed way the hell out. Why did they call you that? That's a story I'd like to hear. So he's not a literal bastard. He's just like, he's a, a jerk. If we weren't close to dying from starvation, of course. We should make traps. The forest must be full of tiny meat on legs. Probably a good idea. And full of big dangers. I'd prefer you stay here with me. There's plenty to do at camp. Ugh, in your dreams, Mom. Yeah, yeah. Is she going to sneak out in the middle of the night? Because that is a terrible idea. I do not want that. Okay, we have some axes. We have some bags. We're good to cut trees in the forest from now on. Perfect. I'll let you take care of that. I don't have the muscle for it. You can help too, Moira. You must strengthen your body. You're too weak. Wow, really calling her out. Everyone, quit digging into each other so much. Is this what's going to happen every night? Because you're getting separated. You're not spending the night in the shelter to get together anymore. I'm the sister who got the mind and you got the muscle. Right back at you. Super pissed straight back at you. And I got both. <laughs> and then everyone's mad at her. Fuck you, Kira. Don't brag. <sighs> you sure do, child. Oh, good. He's He's proud of her. Cutting trees is tiresome, but hauling them back to camp even more so. Anyone can help, but don't overdo it if you're too tired. You'll just end up hurting yourself. I just want to remind everyone that wood is our main resource for crafting and keeping our fire, so we shouldn't overlook keeping a steady supply of wood. Good. Nice reminder. Build your camp. Nice overall thing. Uh, d dehydrated. Oh my god, so many things are happening here. Every night, the characters will most likely be dehydrated. The more potable water you give them, the more likely they will rehydrate. Staying dehydrated means penalties. If they become too dehydrated and not are not rehydrated, they will die. Drag and drop their allocated ration on each of them and finally click on the next button. Oh, Jesus. How much do I have? I only have two? Uh... <laughs> I think I am giving everyone a quarter ration tonight. That seems terrible, but that's, I'm sorry, we, we just don't have enough to go around, so you're just getting, everyone's getting a little bit shafted here. Fucking take your water. I I want you, oh, you're not, you're not at risk of dehyd dehydrating. Okay, so I'll just leave that as is then. Everyone guzzled up their water. Ah, oh, she's still at risk. Should have given her a bit more. Share the food. They also need to split whatever edible stuff they have. Different food have different effects. Most of the food is perishable, so a good part of it will rot before the end of the night. They might be better off getting the most value out of it right now. Drag and drop food onto them and proceed to the end. Can I cook it, though? There's a chance of nausea. You must have to cook it uh, during the daytime. I only want to give you one. Oh, it even specifically splits it for me, perishable and non-perishable. All right, so that's, I feel like that's all square now. And trait effects, a little bit more sick, which might have come from what she just ate. The night effects, minus to fatigue, that automatically takes care of itself. 20 plus percent coming out of the fire, which is... Not as bad as I thought it would be. It's not unsubstantial, but it's a little bit more than I thought. So one of the raw fishes went bad. Probably, maybe you can use that as bait or something. I have, or I had fish bait, not fish hooks. I don't know. Maybe there's something you can get out of that still. Maybe it's not just totally useless. 
I I should have uh, given Bruder Weld Bruder Bruder Wed. I should have given her more to drink. So today's weather is sunny. During the day, all that just kind of maybe that was if you had in progress things. Night effects minus twenty to ten and minus thirty to twenty for the fatigue and fire intensity there, which will be important. That's good to have like a range, a sense of how that'll all stack up. So day two, we survived one night, no miracle there, but uh, cool. I think that is like 100% of everything we need to know for the sake of managing things. Now it'll just be a sense of uh, discovering new things and, and reacting to, to anything that comes our way, any of that sort of stuff. But for the most part, I think we have things uh, sorted out here. I doubt anyone new will be joining the camp or anything. So I really like how well-defined what needs to be done in the game is. And it seems to be staying just below the threshold of like, this is too complicated. So I'm pretty excited to check out some more of it. Hopefully I can keep the family alive for a, a decently long little while. I'm playing on like normal standard difficulty so we'll we'll see how it goes i'm not i'm no pro at this sort of game so i was a little scared to do more than that thank you guys so much for watching i hope you're as interested as i am and i'll see you again soon